Hi guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you do, uh, for what you've done today, and what you're about to do through this sermon, and what you will do in our lifetime. Fill my mouth with what you would have me to say about the scar tissue that we all carry, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you will just give me word that I didn't plan and to speak, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will free someone with this word, because it's not for me that I do this. First and foremost, Lord, it's for you. But it's also for the people that you've given me. The people out there in YouTube land and Facebook land and Instagram, God, that you've given me and I'm so thankful for it that you've entrusted me with there that I would speak what only what you have given me, Lord. I pray that you would speak to me and speak through me in the name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, um, my, the sermon today is called The Processed, it's called Scar Tissue, The Processed Pretty, I'll say that title again, Scar Tissue, The Processed to Pretty. Um, it first came about when I was, um, just going about my daily business and um, I was listening to the song I'm not pretty I forget who it was by I was listening to the song called I'm not pretty and it um, it if you haven't heard that song it's about it's a very real account about a girl struggling with her self-image, her weight, uh, feeling worthy, like we all do from time to time. I don't care who you are. Uh, you struggle with that at some level. Um, it at some point in your life. And some, um, she says, um, she says, everyone says that I'm beautiful, but I, I don't feel beautiful. Every song says, have faith in your sin, or every song says that I'm beautiful, but I don't feel beautiful. And I started to talk about, to think about, rather, uh, the, the pressure we put on ourselves not only to be beautiful, uh, quote-unquote beautiful, whatever that means, um, but the pros, the pressure we put on ourselves uh, to be confident, to be okay with ourselves, to be, you know, whole with ourselves, and and like I was thinking about all this pressure we put on our, ourselves to feel okay to be okay and um, as I was listening to this very real song I first heard it on the radio and I was captivated by the lyrics I'm I just got a Google Nest recently, and a Google Nest is one of those things that can play music, it can give you the weather, it can play any song if you're connected, and it can call people and whatever. So, after I heard this song on the radio, I listened to it again and again and again and again. Because I first appreciated uh, her vulnerability, this young woman talking about um, uh, beauty and her struggle with it. 
she says all the songs tell me I'm beautiful, but I don't feel beautiful, and it was just so astounding to me how vulnerable and honest she was, and I was like, and the Lord whispered to me, he said, he said, um, uh, beauty, feeling beautiful, feeling okay with yourself, feeling worthy of what you have. It's a process to get there. And he said, the Lord said to me, Rachel, it's okay to go through the process of feeling uh, beautiful, feeling worthy, feeling whatever. And a lot of people put pressure on themselves, like, I have to be calm, confident, I have to do this, I have to do that. And I'm coming to the point now that, uh, no, I don't. I just have to go through the process of, of, of becoming. And I think the process of becoming is so interesting because you learn a lot about yourself along the way. And a lot, um, the thing about society is we expect, we, we, um, we celebrate goals. We congratulate goals, but we don't respect process. And, and the Lord said to me, pretty, it, cause the song's called, I'm not pretty. The Lord said to me, pretty is a process. So feeling okay, feeling beautiful, feeling all uh, right within yourself, in your skin, realizing that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes, realizing all that comes through a process. It often comes through pain, it comes through trial, it comes through people leaving you, people telling you that you're fat, people telling you that you need to lose weight, people telling you that men don't like fat um, or big boned women or you'll never get a man looking like that or whatever. It often comes through fighting through the, the process of that. So being okay with yourself is often a fight and fighting with it you don't fight alone first you fight with god um first you fight alongside the lord and then you fight alongside people and realize that in some way shape or form everybody is going through some sort of fight uh, some sort of internal fight, whether it be a fight for beauty, a fight for acceptance, whatever the fight may be. And even in those bigger fights, there will be a fight for beauty having to do with yourself and self-love, or having to do with feeling beautiful for a partner or a husband or a wife, that could be a fight too, because you could love yourself all you want, um, but when it comes to a relationship, you're kind of like, um, no, no one will find me attractive, or whatever, um, there's that kind of fight too, and it's a process, and he wants me to tell you today that it's okay to go through the process of pretty. Being okay, feeling uh, beautiful, feeling pretty on the inside. We all 
we've all heard that that's what matters. But I'm telling you, it really does. But but coming coming to terms and really embracing that truth is a process, and it's okay to go through the process. And later later on this later on in the week this was at the beginning of the week later on in the week i i came to a um i was um talking thinking about what songs the girl the uh person who sang I, i'm not pretty might have heard and I was thinking of the song by Alicia Cara, Scars to Your Beautiful. And um, I was thinking that she she might have heard that song. Uh, that song is a real powerful song too. Um, it is just powerful. And uh, it... Um, and then, listening to Scars to Your Beautiful led me to ask Google about scarring. And the, and the Wikipedia definition that it gave me said, scarring, it, it said something so powerful. Are you ready for this? I'm so excited! Um, you know what it said? It said, scarring is a natural part of the healing process. So it said, when you have scars, it's, a, it's an indication that you are healing. And I was, after this re revelation, I was thinking about some, some of my scars and whatever. Um, I can't remember what song I was listening to, but I was listening to a song and I said, I'm scarred there still, which, which means I'm, there's been a, been a wound, I'm not bleeding anymore, I'm not like it doesn't it's not gaping anymore but there is scarring there and and reading from wikipedia i know they say that wikipedia is not reliable but for my purposes it works it said that scarring is a natural part of the healing process so you're saying you have scars, you're saying that you are not worthy enough. Know that your scars are a, like, they say so, so many ridiculous things. They say, turn your scars into stars and all of that rhyming stuff. But I'm changing it because Having scars means you're healing. Scars means that the damaged tissue is starting to heal. Uh, the, the damaged tissue um, from a cut is starting to heal. And that's what scars mean, so you don't need to turn it into something, uh, quote-unquote beautiful. Understand that your scars or your process is healing, and, it, and, it's, and it's more than good enough. It, it shows that you're human, and it shows your greatness. Pretty is not always looking good or whatever. Pretty is a process.
are feeling beautiful. On the inside is a process because when you um, get down to the core of who you are, it's not about your skin color or it's not about um, your orientation. It, it, it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. It matters that you're a human created by God. And that's what makes you beautiful. And that's by feeling that way, getting to that place, it's a process. And it's okay. But we live in a society that respects results but shuns process. We like to lose weight, but we don't like to exercise. Even though it builds muscle and uh, spiritual exercise builds character, even though it does all that, we don't like process, but you need process. Because in that process, you'll learn so much about yourself, as I said before. And feeling beautiful, feeling okay with yourself, is a process. And it's okay to admit that I'm scarred here. And you don't need to turn your scars into stars. Just leave them the way they are. And sc scars don't mean gaping wounds. Scars are stories that um, can, can bring out testimonies to free not only you, but other people. I have a scar right on my head um, from when, when I was 15. I, I, I was getting on my wheelchair wrap. They had, um, my parents had a stroller for me. And we would take it to church. And one Sunday, we were, I was on the ramp. And my sister was, was, was my mom was lifting up the ramp and then I fell off the ramp and then I was okay never mind I was okay um but I spent a day in the hospital but then up to this day I have a scar on my head to prove it. Um, I have a scar on the left side of my head where I had to get stitches because um, the fall had caused me to get a gash on my skin that caused my head to open. So they had to stitch it back up. So that that fall, that was years ago, I was 15 when that happened, I'm 37 now, but that scar brings a story, so scars bring stories, so scars aren't something that we should cover up, they're something that we should expose, expose and share the story so that other people can get healed. Now, I'm not saying at all to share your bleeding wounds. And the difference between a scar and a bleeding wound is a scar is something, um, uh, oh, a, a scar is something that that will say that you had a wound there but it's healed so you can talk about it 
a wound is bleeding and it's pussy and it's nasty. When you are going through a wound, it is important to let it heal and then you can share it. Or while you're going through that wound, be very careful, be very selective about who you share it with. When you're going through a wound, you need to share it with very selective people. You may need to share it with family, you may need to share it with a friend or two, but you do not have to share it with everyone. Um, Whereas scar, scars, you could share the story with with uh, people, mass, masses of people, and they can get healed. But the re- reasons you don't share emotional wounds with people is because wounds are bleeding and pussy and nasty. And they need um, healing first. They need to scab over. A lot of people that you see on Facebook arguing or whatever, on social media, uh, commenting, saying nasty comments about people, it's because they have wounds that haven't healed yet. And they have emotional wounds that you cannot see from the outside, but those emotional wounds are bleeding. They're pussy. They're totally, um, they're totally, like, um, they're hurting. And a lot of people have wounds that they've just stuffed down. And dealing with your wounds is more um, than stuffing it down and saying, yeah, I'm dealing with it. No, you're hiding it. You're not dealing with it. You're hiding it. And the Lord said, stop hiding your wounds and pretending like everything's okay. He said, Bring it to me. He Last week I talked about the church saying, Shake it off and just praise the Lord. And I said, remember I said last week, if you saw my sermon last week, I said, do not shake it off. Bring your wounds, bring your bleeding to the Lord and let him heal it and let him bring the right people in to carry you through those wounds, to hide you, uh, to protect you, to give you counsel at uh, those wounds that you don't, you don't need to shake it off and just praise the Lord and pretend that it's okay. You need to bring those wounds to the Lord and let him heal it. Let him shelter you, cover you, shepherd you, bring the right people around. So when that wound is closed up and becomes a scar, then you can share it with people. I'm not saying to hide what you're going through. I'm saying when when you get a wound, it's important to let it heal and scar before you share it with the masses. You will probably, when you're bleeding and broken, need to share it with somebody. But you don't need to share it with everybody, especially on a, in social media. Because if you do, it will get infected and it will spread to the body. And that's what's happened in the church. You have leaders, you have pastors that have been 
hurt and wounded and broken and stuff and you have people that have been broken and hurt and wounded and stuff um and that haven't let those wounds heal and sc and scar over and not to share it with people but while they're still wounded they're sharing it and it's infecting the whole body you have whole churches that have been infected with wounds that their leader has uh, let blood and pus come on to the to the members and get in their hearts and get in their heads and get in some wounds that they might have had and it spreads to the whole entire body. Um, the Lord is calling for healing today of scar, of, um, scar tissue, and he's calling, and he's saying that, um, uh, beauty is a, beauty is a process, and he wants his bride to be beautiful without spot or wink, wink, wrinkle. He he doesn't want these wounds to be infected, to be infecting people. He wants the scars only to tell story, stories, and scars are are picture. Scars are are proof that yes. I've had something happen there, but now it, it's healed, and I'm and I'm okay to talk about it. Because sometimes, again, when you share a wound with someone and it's not healed, what that person can say um, will infect it more. Or, or tear it wide open. So that's another reason why wounds can't be shared with everybody. Wounds have to be shared with somebody, only the people that God has ordained. So when you're wounded by people or by circumstances, go to God first and say, Lord, who can I share this with? Who in my life can I share this with? Who who will understand this wound? Or, you know, what do I do with this wound? You, you don't automatically get on the phone and say, that so-and-so did this. First of all, you go to God and get his his take on what to do with this wound because he doesn't want you to be broken anymore he wants his body to be healed and he wants the people in his body to have rich fulfilling lives and he also wants me to say wholeness is possible i'll say that again wholeness is possible a lot of people think that they have to live this way for so long they have to live depressed they have to live financially broken they have to live this way and the lord is saying no it is possible to experience freedom in every area of your life on this side of your life he said it is possible wholeness is possible but like beauty wholeness is a process but it is possible and the Lord is ready to free you to to pour his love on you you've been battling with wounds for too long. For some of you have been molested, you've been cheated on, you've been, um, you've been 
misused in some way, and you are angry, and you have let that anger fester, and you let that sadness fester, that hurt fester, and it's created a wound, and you've been bleeding on everybody in your life, and the Lord says that it's time for that to stop today. He's saying, I want to heal that wound. I want to heal that infection in your family. That's why your family is falling apart. Not because your husband won't pick up the garbage or not because your wife spends too much money. There is a wound there that, that you've been running from, hiding from, trying to escape. That the Lord wants to heal right now. And the Lord said, it's okay, I'm right here. And he's saying also too, it's okay to fall apart for a little while. Because sometimes the key to being putting back, put back together is falling apart. We're so afraid to fall apart. We're so afraid to look weak. We're so afraid to be vulnerable. But the the beginning of vulnerability and the beginning of falling apart is life. Is the beginning of life. If you don't fall apart, how can you be put back together? You're so busy acting like everything's okay, your kids are okay, your marriage is wonderful. How, how are you, Sister Zosa? Oh, blessed and highly favored at the Lord. Oh, shut up. You're not, you're not blessed and highly favored at the Lord. You are, but you're hiding and you're using this religious rhetoric that you've been taught to to actually say that you don't have any issues, but you know you're dying inside. You know those wounds from when you were seven, what that teacher said, scarred you for life. The Lord wants you to be healed. The Lord wants you to, to know that healing is possible. And you don't have to live with um, with this false perfection to act like you have, haven't done anything wrong. And you don't have to be afraid that people will find out because the, per the, the one who really matters already knows. You're not hiding from anyone. You're not, um, you're not fooling anyone. You're probably not fooling the people around you, but you're definitely not fooling God. A lot of, uh, some people, I should say, are so self-righteous, not because uh, they just are that way, whatever, but a lot of them are carrying wounds and their self-righteousness is covering, is they think that their self-righteousness is covering up their wounds, but it's not. It's just making them uh, more apparent, and it's making the person more miserable. And it's easier to point out somebody else's flaws um, than it is to pay attention to your own. And I didn't mean to be so crass um, before, but, but I just see a lot of people just broken and just um, saying that they're so perfect and looking down on other people while that, that person is dealing with wounds and hurts and brokenness that they refuse to deal with. Beloved, there is life and light on the other other end of this. 
you don't have to deal with this. You don't have to deal with this. Healing is possible. Feel, um, freedom is possible. If you're willing to put in the work and go through the process. And the scar tissue will, will um, be a story of freedom that will help other people. So guys, I thank you for just being with me today and, and um, supporting my ministry and myself. I really appreciate it. Bye. Heal us today, God. Heal us from our wounds so we can show our scars off, not as brokenness, but as stories and as a process to our healing. In the name of Jesus, amen.